Calaroga Shark Media. Hello, I'm Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. Sebastian Maniscalco shared his go-to high-protein breakfast with the folks at Men's Health. He showed off his black and white striped fridge. Men's Health says the fridge itself is meticulously organized, filled with every imaginable fruit, vegetable, meat, cheese, pasta, etc. Not only is it visually appealing, but it showcases the variety of foods and flavors he incorporates into his meals. You mean he doesn't go to the national donut chain every morning and eat something that's totally unhealthy and a large iced coffee with caramel and milk? Maniscalco jokes that the container of bell peppers is strictly for color and quips, we bought it for the look. He claims his staple ingredient is eggs, and a typical breakfast for Sebastian Maniscalco consists of three or four eggs, smoked salmon, and some avocado. When he's on tour, he likes to eat healthier and prioritize protein as a way to sustain the energy and physicality required for his sets. One thing you'll never find in his fridge? Every Friday growing up, my mother would make liver with onions, and it was awful. Maniscalco then took men's health to the gym, where he showed off his latest addition, pickleball courts. He jokes because he's now 50. It felt necessary. Yeah, uh, I'm 50 something and that seems to be the rage. I'm still out there playing beach volleyball with people literally half my age. Last week, a teammate was talking to someone on the other team and she realized, oh, it's not just I could be your mom. I could be your grandmother. (laughs) Sebastian said when I was in my 20s, 30s and early 40s, it was primarily aesthetics. Used to be a lot about weight training. There's no more plates now. It's more about nutrition and being flexible. I don't really care if I have the biggest chest, biceps, legs. That's not the intention here. The intention now is about mobility. Entertainment Weekly did a big profile of Stephen Colbert. He pulled out a framed photo of an early career Walter Cronkite where he used to discuss the day's headlines with a puppet named Charlemagne. Colbert said, this is my reminder that Walter Cronkite started off as a morning anchor who had a puppet lion. So let's not hear about the dignity of CBS News. <laughs> Back at Northwestern University, he paid his $50 rent by building cheap futon frames out of two by fours and drywall screws and selling them to the broke college students. He recalls they'd fall apart in the middle of the night. People would call me furious and I'd put a handful of screws in my pocket and grab a cordless drill. I'd ride my bike across Evanston. I'd fix their bed and I'd go home. (laughs) Eventually, he got a job answering phones and selling souvenirs at Second City. A perk of the job, free classes. Perhaps his improv background makes him such a good listener. He says, I'm not setting the tone. My interests are eclectic and my tone is malleable. There's almost nothing that we could talk about that I'm not going to find some interest in. I'm willing to ride your pony wherever. The only exception is when he has politicians on the show. With politicians, I feel a different obligation to ask the questions that I want to ask, not the questions that they want to be asked. It's not like I want to be adversarial, but when you interview a politician, you can't edit anything they want you to edit. He plans to host the late show as long as they'll let him. Vulture caught up with Tig Nataro and asked Tig about the joke she's most excited to show her kids one day. Tig said, I'm very curious what they're going to think about when I take my shirt off and boyish girl interrupted. It was only from watching Drawn did they find out I even had cancer. They had no clue. They'd seen my body and they had no questions about my scars. But I remember lying in the bed the morning after they watched Drawn. They had a lot of questions about what cancer was. They were pointing at my scars and they were like, and this is from cancer. So I guess I'm curious what they'll think about that moment when I took my shirt off. The first time I did it at Largo, I felt a little insecure because I, like my son Max, am modest. I was definitely uncomfortable, but I remember Bo Burnham was there. And after the show, he was like, whoa, my mind is blown. This is not just about women or cancer. This is about body image. This is about being comfortable with the human body. That really gave me more strength and power behind what I was doing. It doesn't matter who you are or what's going on. This is about bodies. The Hollywood Reporter had a roundtable of comedians, and they talked about not wanting to see someone you know in the audience. Taylor Tomlinson said, I've had people from high school come sit in the front row, and you're like, no, please not like there. They think they're being supportive, and they are. We appreciate it, but I'm like, sit halfway back right where the darkness starts. And she also doesn't like any folded pair of arms in the front row, no matter what they're attached to. You're kind of like, let's unfold those over the course of the night. Mike Birbiglia said, people you know are not who you want in a stand-up comedy audience. Jackie Novak and I toured together, and we always compared it to being an exotic dancer or a stripper. It's like, you don't really want your friends to be there when you're stripping. Vulture wrote five new comedy specials. You should definitely watch when you have a moment. Got a holiday week coming up. We probably have some time. They point out upward of 150 stamp specials were released in 2023. Here are some recommendations. Alex Edelman's Just For Us. This is the one about Edelman's story of the time he went to a white supremacist meeting in Queens and tried to hide that he was Jewish. I have not seen that one yet. Kyle Kinane's Dirt Nap on YouTube. I love that one. That has a nice 15-minute chunk 
about Fast and Furious that I think is uh, an all-timer. I don't know how deep the all-timer list is, but I would put this up there with things like Eddie Murphy, The Barbecue. Nathan McIntosh's Down With Tech on YouTube. I had finally gotten around to that one. That's pretty good. A focused assault on a single topic, tech companies and the tech nerds, he argues, who run the world. McIntosh's strength is his frenzied performance and specifically his constantly cracking sky is falling voice. I will recommend that one to you. You should watch that one. Uh, Christina Catherine Martinez, her debut special, Martinez is shot alone in an empty gallery space surrounded by a fridge, oven, and baking materials, wearing an unfinished pink dress pulled tight in the back with large steel clamps. It's not the first special shot without an audience, but with How to Bake a Cake, it underlines the loneliness of the material and the emptiness of modern life that Martinez is commenting on. Uh, This one sounds pretty cool. I haven't seen this one. When she mentions her day job at a startup, an ominous off-camera voice asks her what she did there. She says, I honestly have no idea. As far as I could tell, my job was every day going to an office and then I'd like touch base all day. That's what they don't tell you in college. You can work in any creative industry if you know how to touch base. If you check in and circle back, then you have upper management written all over you. Boy, <laughs> now I really want to watch that. Another one I haven't seen they recommend. Natasha Vainblant's We're All Dads Here. This one also on YouTube. We're all dads here, they say, feels like a little Oasis time machine, because unlike many recent specials, she's just really, really silly. She tells a joke about how her old roommate used to know she was going to the bathroom because she'd hear Vane Bland say, oh boy, to herself, which only gets sillier when Vane Bland explains that she spilled water on her laptop after writing that joke, so that when the computer repair person brought it back to life, all they saw on the screen was the phrase, oh boy, when I poop. <laughs> What makes the kookiness work is Vainblad is a deliberate, self-aware joke writer and precise performer able to gracefully slip in and out of characters and voices. And while most YouTube specials are shot without much direction beyond just documenting the live show, where all dads here has some nice flourishes. That sounds like a really good special. I would like to check that one out. And perhaps this week when I have a little more time, I will. That is your comedy news for today. If you enjoy the show, tell a friend about it. Hopefully they'll like it too. And you can all hit follow on your Apple Podcasts app. You know, cool. See you tomorrow.